I like to describe a technique for marking the cornea for placing toric IOLs, which I have been using for the last five years and which has given me wonderful post-operative results. These results, of course, depend on accurate data acquisition along with a precise and perfect alignment of the toric intraocular lens. A three-degree misalignment can lead to a 10% loss of effectivity, while a 10-degree misalignment can lead to a 30% loss of effectivity. In the new marking technique, I changed two things. Firstly, I did away with the marker pens because I feel that these marker pens leave behind marks that are too thick. And when I actually took a close look at the thickness of these marks, I found them to be at least five degree thick, as you can see from the graduated scale of the Mendes axis marker. This is my new inkless marking instrument the hockey stick blade, which is a disposable unit manufactured by most uh, companies that manufacture disposable blades. All you have to do is to align the sharp edge of the hockey stick blade on the corneal epithelium and gently press to leave behind a mark. This blade leaves behind thin fine white lines that are quite easily visible uh, under the operating microscope and they are bang on axis as well. The second thing I decided to do away with were the reference markings at 0 and 180 degrees because based on these reference marks the axis of placement and the site of incision marks were made on extrapolation basis and I found that there could be errors while performing this extrapolation both while marking the site of incision as well as while marking the axis of placement and these errors can then add up to lead to a significant error of sometimes 5 to 10 degrees. Hence what I do today is that I mark both the site of incision and the placement axis markings directly under the slit lamp. You are all aware that there is a graduated scale in the slit lamp that enables us to turn the angulation of the slit beam to our desired axis simply by rotating this graduated scale. It is graduated in 5 degree steps and is as sensitive as the Mendes axis marker which is also graduated in 5 degree steps. So let's take a look at uh, how we can go about with this new marking technique. We start off with the patient sitting under a slit lamp and gazing at distance with topical anesthesia, I align the 14 mm long slit beam to coincide with the desired axis and make sure that this slit beam passes through the Hirschberg reflex to ensure that you are bisecting the cornea in the correct mid plane. And then by using the hockey stick blade, I gently press on the epithelium. After marking the axis of placement, I also mark the site of incision in the same manner. A 14 mm long slit beam is important so it will overlap the limbus and it's also important that you pass to the Hirschberg reflex. In the, uh, under the operating microscope these marks are pretty clearly visible as you can see. I start off by making the incision using a 2.8 keratome bisecting the radial mark that I have made coinciding with the site of incision marks and once this is done a properly sized capsular axis of 5 mm is completed this is important to give rotational stability to the toric lens because the bag has to overlap the optic margin the nucleus disassembly is carried out by a direct echo chop technique and once this has been successfully accomplished. The cortical aspiration is performed using a unimanual or coaxial IA cannula. At this point, I actually tend to enhance the visibility of these axis of placement marks by leaching on a little amount of blue dye. Now, why I do this is because while you're focused on the cornea, these marks are visible, but when you're focused on the IOL plane, these marks may not be visible, therefore a little amount of 
a blue dye this is achieved by rubbing the marker pen onto the back of an instrument and gently pressing it and the blue dye will will go and stain only the groove of this marks that you've made then you wash it off this is another way of uh, enhancing the view with blue dye so apply a little bit of blue dye and then you just wash it off you will have thin fine blue lines because this blue ink will just go to the groove of the mark that you've made and it will not produce thick lines. So once you have adequately enhanced the visibility of the corneal marking, you can go ahead with the implantation of the toric intraocular lens. After implantation, the toric lens is then rotated till it comes to lie within 5 degrees from the intended axis of placement. At this point, the viscoelastic is washed out not only from in front of the lens, but more importantly from behind the lens and from within the capsular bag. This step is important to prevent the lens from rotating within the capsular bag. The final placement is then achieved and two things are important here. One is make sure that the Purkinje reflexes from the cornea and the lens are well centered along with the marks of the cornea and the toric marks on the lens. The advantage of having the radial toric marking is that you can actually verify the placement by parallax. If the radial marks on the cornea as well as the toric marks on the intraocular lens are perfectly parallel to each other, it means that the positioning of the lens is spot on and it is on the right axis.